why Tinubu is unlikely to succeed. In the following piece, I will delve into the fact about Nigeria's current president, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, his inconsistencies, incompetences, and his apparent inability to rule Nigeria, which in itself is not a normal country. The colorful personality of Tinubu, with an opaque approach to politics, backdoor deals, and ties to openly incriminated and corrupt individuals, Tinubu does not stand out. He is the quintessential team player of the Nigerian elite. No, the apple does fall far from the tree. I refuse to use that old but true adage. In Tinubu's case, he is the tree that produces the apples. With a penchant for exclusive lifestyle affordable only to the super rich, Tinubu will move trees, even his tree that produces apples, to maintain his ostentatious lifestyle. With no business ventures, no lottery ticket, or even an attempt to hide his ill-gotten wealth, you cannot expect a habitual, iniquitous person to suddenly act equitably. You cannot also expect to make sense out of the country by using people who have made the country nonsensical. That'd be like doing the same thing and expecting a different result. For decades, politicians in Nigeria have lived with immunity. They have changed the way governance matures in Nigeria. If politicians in other countries strive to portray transparency, those in Nigeria try to intimidate their subject using the funds looted from the coffers of the same people they were supposed to govern. Most Nigerians are under 35 years old. They've only known such a system. Thus, almost an entire country is riddled with a population whose world view is one of looting of the nation's coffers. The Nigerian police is a cascade of corrupt, uneducated, untrained, violent, ill-informed, misogynistic, male-dominated bands of unacceptable individuals. There is no sense of order from the police to the pension service, driving license, immigration, foreign affairs, road management, secret service, judicial system, tax office, and every other institution not mentioned. A country as such is doomed to fail. Tinubu's failure is already seen by that. A country with such abysmal failing institutions cannot be revived through signatures sitting in the air-conditioned rooms and offices in Azurok. It can also not be done through the Houses of Parliament, which are also inept and the replicas of the failing institutions in the country. No matter how that tree that produces the apples defies the norms, Nigeria is not fixable through signature and the person of good laws without the infrastructure and discipline that underpin the rule of law becoming mainstream. The law in Nigeria is for the weak, poor, and the not so connected. Its application applies best to those who try to prevent the elite from looting their birthright dividends, the Nigerian coffer. We have seen five months, or almost six maybe, of President Tinubu, and it is not different from the former Buhari or the one before him. Bad luck, oh, pardon my French, good luck, Jonathan. They all exude the same strategy, doing the same thing and expecting a different result. The classical definition of madness. Exactly why Tunable 
is unlikely to succeed. Tinubu's campaign architect and those who made his victory possible are exactly the kind of people who have led Nigeria to its current abysmal state. How can you expect him to change Nigeria? For one, the political sphere in Nigeria is tainted with irremovable spots of corruption, and Tinubu is one of those at the helm. Let me take you back in time. During the presidential election in 2015, Tinubu was the mastermind who drafted the reintroduction of Muhammadu Buhari as the presidential candidate of the newly created APC. With his unscrupulous tentacles, he raised funds to support Buhari, a man who was an utter disgrace for a president. Again, in 2019, he garnered support for the re-election of Buhari as president without an evaluation of the four years spent in the kindergarten leadership style of Buhari's presidency. And so we went again for another four years. This is where it begins to make sense. Nigerian politics is, in Nigerian parlance, a perfect example of, do me, I do you. What Tinubu aimed to achieve was to succeed Buhari as the president of the country. And the latter did not disappoint in endorsing Tinubu's presidency. As Buhari was done wreaking havoc on Nigeria, Tinubu came in to continue where Buhari had stopped. It's his turn, you know, he already said so. In fact, we already see Tinubu's unspoken plan to further wreak Nigeria taking effect already. It's happening. He has successfully installed a bandwagon of the same old faces. How does he really expect to change Nigeria with the same people? The pen, as we can see, is mightier than the sword. Whoever made up that adage definitely had Nigeria in mind. How Tinubu thought that he would come after Buhari has destroyed Nigeria, appoint his corrupt bodies, same faces, then sit in Azarog, like I'm sitting here, signing laws, and Nigeria would, at the click of a finger, change. It beats my imagination. Pure fantasies. A country without a solid police force is doomed. Security attracts investment. Or, as Ngoji Okonje Wela rightly put in a speech at the recent Southeast Forum, the two go hand in hand. A country without a solid police force is an unsecured country. An unsecured country does not attract investment. An unproductive country that depends on imports is doomed to fail. Thus, Tunibu has already failed. The Nigerian road network is in total shambles. Motorists have no clue about basic driving regulations and there are no mechanisms in place to structure this. You cannot change Nigeria without changing its road network and motorists so the flow of goods and services between its vast lands goes smoothly, thus creating jobs in the east, west, south and north. How do you intend to change Nigeria with a pen sitting in Azura? The Nigerian system on how to set up companies, corporations and other small related business endeavors is literally run like a gathering of big cats looking for prey to devour. The time it takes to complete a simple company registration, handout and kickback was have passed through several front and back door. The hurdles are too much. This discourages investors and makes the ease of doing business impossible. Nigeria cannot change if small businesses, companies and FDI are not given a welcoming environment to thrive. The sustainability of Nigeria and every developed economy is propelled by small businesses. Nigeria is a country of small businesses. 
No president can succeed without creating a thriving environment for them. Tinubu has already failed. His policies are no different from his failed predecessors. The Nigerian port, airport, seaport, all the port are infested with under-trained officers who will devastate travelers and importers of every cobble given the chance. The system is so rotten that kickbacks have taken center stage. How can a country grow with such failing institutions? Has Tinubu ever mentioned or attempted to tackle these institutions from the foundation? He's very busy signing worthless documents in his air-conditioned offices in a country where over 60% live in multidimensional poverty and most earn less than $2 a day. The Nigerian educational system has, oh, sorry, was I about to say failed? How dishonest of me. There's no such thing as a Nigerian educational system. How does a country with a known existent educational system intend to compete in a world where computation, artificial intelligence, and other technology related fields are the go getters. Countries are producing in abundance skilled youth. Nigeria is uneducating its youth. How else can Nigeria change, grow, or be transformed? What's worse is Tinubu's ignorance of how a country should run. Sadly, he does not understand Nigeria outside Lagos and lacks basic knowledge of Southern and Southeast Nigeria. Northern Nigeria is, of course, outside of his curriculum. Trust me, maybe he thinks governing a whole country is as easy as governing a state. But no, it isn't. Tinubu turned Lagos into an enclave for thugs and area boys. And it seems like his next project is to make Nigeria a one big thug devil. Renewed hope, that was Tinubu's slogan during the election. But in just six months, Tinubu has plunged Nigeria into a much more deplorable state than Buhari left it. You begin to wonder if there is any hope for Nigeria at all. It is even more impossible to think of anything new about Nigeria since he became president. Tinubu has only shown to be renewing his loyalty to those who helped him secure the presidency. He values them more than 220 million Nigerians. A president who cannot empathize with those whom he claims to govern is bound to be voted out if ever the elections are going to be free and fair in Nigeria. In fact, he has already failed. I'm going to end here because if I don't, it could end up in a book. As the woes are endless and I have not even started scratching the soil, Tinubu is not likely to succeed, not necessarily because he's not a transparent, honest, intelligent, or skilled politician or person. He's likely to fail because he was stained even before he started. And he does not understand what it takes to transform a country, especially one like Nigeria. Nigeria requires going back to the drawing board, revisiting its foundations, and then setting a workable and attainable target. Yes, this may cause short-term losses and deep wounds, but its long-term benefits are non-negotiable when Nigeria succeeds. You cannot change Nigeria by changing who spends the next 1,461 days on the cozy bed in Asura. The person who signs your passport may change, but the passport doesn't change 
because its renewed copy has a different issue signature. If you think we're wrong, if you think we make the mistake, if you think we were too harsh on Tinubu, or if you have a constructive criticism, please leave them in the comment section below. Or you can drop us an email at info at Bantu page. Also, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, like, share, and also don't forget to subscribe to be notified whenever we publish videos like this. Thank you.